According to UFC President Dana White, Islam Mahashev will defend his lightweight title against Charles Oliveira at UFC 294 in Abu Dhabi. And Dana White wasn't finished there. Credit to my buddy Marcel Dorf uh, getting the uh, info from Dana White. I guess he went live on the UFC Australia Instagram account is what I'm hearing, announcing a bunch of fights, including the rematch between Islam Mahashev and Charles Oliveira. We've also got Paulo Costa and Hamzat Chimaev. Uh, there was a report out a few days ago. Looks like that was right. So they have removed Paulo Costa from the fight at UFC 291 next Saturday. He will be taking on Chimaev in Abu Dhabi. And we've got Nasruddin Imovov taking on Ikram. So they've split up the Paulo Costa and Ikram fight. They both have new opponents here. We got so much to get into. First and foremost, um, like I mentioned, UFC 294, stat card. I mean, these fights are huge, uh, all, all the fights that are put together. Let's start first with Islam and Charles. So we had heard, and I mean, you heard this at the expo when Charles Oliveira was at International Fight Week. He said he wasn't going to be ready in time to fight Islam Mahashev. It looks like the UFC is either paying him a lot of money or forcing his hand. Again, Dana White's had a habit of doing this where they will announce fights before they are signed. I don't know if that's the case right now. We just know that Dana White has announced that this fight is happening. So Islam going to be defending his title. There was some thought of him maybe fighting Alexander Volkanovsky next. There there was an outside chance that maybe the BMF title winner would get a shot. Um, there was also maybe Armin Saryukin. There was a lot of different options that were being thrown out here. Um, this is, you know, one of the best fights they could do aside from him and Volkanovski, I think. I, I did a video on this before. I, I think this is tough for Charles to fight once again in Abu Dhabi against Islam Mahashev. But hey, you got to take your opportunities when you get them. Uh, we'll, we'll see how, you know, I'm curious to hear what the behind the scenes was of putting this fight together here. But Islam, once again, getting a fight in Abu Dhabi, huge card headlining it. I mean, this is a mega fight here with Islam and Charles Oliveira. Uh, you can see there Islam since the first Charles fight, having a very close fight with Volkanovski. The first Charles fight, I mean, let's call it like it is. Islam dominated the fight in every facet of it. Charles uh, getting submitted in the second round. Um, since then, obviously, Charles Oliveira coming off an impressive win himself, taking out Benil Dariush in the very first round of that fight. So uh, Oliveira did more than enough. A lot of people counting out Oliveira in that fight. If you remember people saying, oh, he's done all this stuff. Well, it didn't happen. He actually looked really good in that fight. So as far as like merit goes, I think this fight makes a lot of sense. This also does not tie up the featherweight division, I would think. Now with this fight being booked, I know Volkanovski recently had surgery, but you have to imagine with this fight getting booked with Oliveira and Islam, the rematch happening, that they're probably going to go with Volkanovski and uh, Ilya Taporia. I don't imagine Volk's going to, I mean, maybe Volk waits around, but I think this leads more to now the Taporia and Volkanovski fight happening. Um, as far as an early pick i've said this before i think islam wins the rematch um i do worry that i mean we're you know what's well, july 19th right now so it should be a decent amount of time for charles to train for this fight this card will not be taking place till october um but still i kind of feel like this rematch is a little bit soon right it'll be uh their, their first fight was what last about a year ago right so that was in october 22nd this card's October 21st, so it'll be like, you know, again, like uh, pretty much a year since their first fight. So uh, we'll see. Uh, like, again, I think Islam has Charles' number. I think it kind of showed in that first fight. We'll see if Charles can get it done, but interested to see what happens there. So uh, I'll do an early look preview on this uh, fight as well. Absolutely big fight coming up here in October. Also start getting some fighter picks for that fight if it ends up, uh, well, it is going to end up happening, right? As uh, Dana White said. Okay, so that's the first fight. Let's talk about the second fight they announced, Paulo Costa and Hamzat Shimaev. I said this on my live stream. I'm going to say it again. A lot of you owe Paulo Costa an apology because everyone ran with, oh, Ikram and Paulo Costa's off. Paulo Costa's must have some contract issues, all these different things. That's not what happened. They moved him. It had nothing to do with him. And look, I'm not a big Paulo Costa fan. You guys know this. If you watch my breakdown in him and Ikram, I actually pick Ikram to beat him in that fight. But I think the fact that people were rushing to judgment about all these rumors about what was happening with, uh, you know, Paulo Costa and Ikram and all that. Remember, Ikram and Roman Delize was supposed to happen. That turns out to be BS. Obviously, now we, we see the fights getting matched up. So um, I, I think, again, the UFC is doing too many events. And this is why they're having to pull fighters from certain cars to make matchups that make sense here. So I actually like this fight a lot between Costa and Hamzat Chimaev. I think it's actually the perfect fight for Hamzat Chimaev to move back up to middleweight. You've got Paulo Costa, who is a ranked opponent. That's one thing that Chimaev is missing uh, on his resume is fighting a ranked middleweight. Paulo Costa, let's be honest, and I've said this before in the breakdown with Ikram, I haven't been that impressed with him. Um, if you actually look at his wins right now, uh, he doesn't have a single win over someone that's currently still in the UFC uh, as far as his UFC win goes. All of these guys are not in the UFC anymore. So... 
This is really a big opportunity here for Paulo Costa to go out there and get a huge win over a guy that's been very hyped and someone that they feel is, you know, a legitimate title challenger in Hamzat Chimaev here. So I think from Costa's perspective, this is far better than fighting Ikram. Again, I think Ikram was a risky fight with not a lot of upside. Hamzat Chimaev, we know the hype that's behind him and not to mention Chimaev already beat Ikram as well. So he beats Chimaev. Costa's going to be right back in the driver's seat. And conversely for Chimaev, I think this is a much better fight than that rumored fight with Jared Cannonier. I know people are very high on you know she might have winning that fight but jared cannon is a tough guy to finish we saw what he did to Marvin Vittori in his last fight. I think this is a much better matchup for Chimaev because, look, I'm of the belief that I think Chimaev is extremely talented. I think we've seen him compete at a high level and beat some really good opponents. But I worry that you fight a Jared Cannon, or I think there's a risk of him losing that fight. I think with this fight, this is a more winnable fight here against Paulo Costa. So the, the matchmaking here is totally on point. I think it's the perfect test for Chimaev to come back up to 185. And honestly, right now, I'll, I'll take Chimaev, but I'm more so relying on the fact that he's just more skilled and he's going to get it done. But Paulo Costa is not a pushover either. Outside of the one fight with him, uh, with um, Israel Adesanya, where I mean he, that fight wasn't close at all. He had the fight with Vittori. I know he lost, but it's not like he got finished in that fight, you know. And then the Rockhold fight. I mean that really told us nothing. But uh, yeah, I, I think there's uh, if we can get the Paulo Costa that fought Yoel Romero, Uriah Hall, the fight with Chimaev is going to be very interesting here. Quick tale of the tape here. I didn't do this on the Islam fight, but you guys know their height and reach already. Six foot two with a seventy five inch reach. Paulo Costa is six foot one with a seventy two inch reach. So you'll see there, uh, Chimaev actually going to be a little bit bigger in this fight. But we know Costa's had uh, not at issues making weight, but remember that whole situation with. Marvin Vittori, where it's like, yeah, we're going to do this fight at light heavyweight in the middle of fight week or whatever. So, um, yeah, uh, interesting fight here. Love the matchmaking on this one. And then finally, I think this fight makes sense, too. You got Ikram, 14 and one uh, again, got a golden ticket against uh, Paulo Costa fighting Imovov, which I know is kind of a bummer, but at least he's still fighting a ranked opponent in Imovov. I thought prior to the, you know, I poke situation with Chris Curtis, I thought Imovov was looking quite good in this fight. And, you know, people harp on Imovov saying he was overrated, all these different things about the Sean Strickland fight. Let's not forget, he had to fight Strickland at a higher weight class. Strickland didn't have to cut all that weight. Strickland is pretty good, as we've seen recently, right, with his win over Abus. I, I just chalk that up to just bad circumstances. We'll see what Imovov looks like in this fight, but Imovov's got some... I mean, remember him destroying Edmund Shabazian, Ian Heinish? I know these aren't like top flight opponents, but I think there's some talent there with Imovov. And, you know, Ikram's... Uh, I, I'm a believer in Ikram as well. I think this is a good test for him too. And it's the type of test that I think... Um, I, I mean, I don't know what's an easier opponent as far as uh, Imovov and Costa, but I think it's still a good fight that the fans are getting. Let's be honest here. The UFC is pushing a lot of the Dagestani fighters, the fighters that, uh, you know, uh, again, are, are popular and interna internationally. You know, you got him and Imovov, who's also uh, from Russia originally as well, right? Um, born in Dagestan, he's Dagestani as well. So this is just a much more fan-friendly fight for the Abu Dhabi card. And I've said this before, the UFC does value Abu Dhabi as a big market for them. They're going to be pushing these fighters. And this is like, I mean, if you're if you're a Muslim fan, you got to be loving this. There's, you know, you got three uh, really big fight, four big fighters, right? You've got, um, obviously, uh, Islam, you've got um, Chimaev, and you've got, well, no, Chimaev's not from Dagestan, but you know what I mean? Like, he's, he's a guy that they're pushing. He's from Chechnya, Chechnyan fighter. Um, and, and again, you've got Imovov, uh, or sorry, Ikram as well. And you've got Imovov as well, too. So, yeah, I think you're sort of getting a bit of everything. Going back to the Ikram fight, though, quickly. Early pick, I'm going to lean slightly towards Ikram, but that's one I will have to dig into a little bit deeper. Again, these are just early picks. This isn't my final pick, but I lean a little bit more towards Ikram just because I have been impressed with him. Some of the stuff that he's done outside the UFC as well. Just the one loss to Hamzat Shimaev in his career. And with Imovov, I'm not counting him out either like some other people are as well. So that's another thing I wanted to mention as, as far as this breakdown goes. So uh, so yeah, UFC 294 looking great. Uh, expect to see more uh, Muslim fighters on this card uh, they're, or international fighters at the very least. They're going to really stack the deck here. Um, but yeah, I'm quite happy with this card. I, I Again, I'm not a huge fan of Oliveira having this rematch so soon because here's the problem with Oliveira, and maybe I'll do a separate video on this, and I kind of already talked about this already. Um, if he loses again, he's screwed. Like, what, what's he going to do? He's not going to go back down to featherweight. Um, I think he's too small for, for welterweight, right? This is a guy that used to fight at 45. I don't think he fights at welterweight. He loses at Islam. He's in a bad position because Islam, I don't think, is losing anytime soon. So... Kind of a risky fight for Oliveira, but again, if the boss is telling you you got to fight in Abu Dhabi, you got to fight in Abu Dhabi. So we'll see what happens in that fight. And uh, again, Islam will get a, uh, you know, again, it's good to see Islam fight in lightweight as opposed to, uh, you know, Volk, who again would be tying up his featherweight division by doing that in interim titles and all that stuff as well. So again, uh, the, these fights, I will do early look breakdowns in every single one of them. I'll give more sort of in depth on that. But just my initial thoughts are, I mean, look, I like all these fights, especially the Costa and Shimaya fight. I think that's a much better fight than the Ikram fight because again, for Costa, 
Costa, I see some upside for him here. Whereas with Ikram, you know, again, Ikram's only got one UFC fight. Does that really help his case as far as being a contender? I think he beat Shimaev. Costa's right back in that title picture, in my opinion, if he beats uh, Shimaev just because of the hype that Shimaev has and everything else. So there we go. Dana White laying down the gauntlet tonight uh, with all these fight announcements. So I want to know what you guys think in the comment section below. Um, who do you favor in these fights? First off, I want to get your picks for Mahashev, Oliveira, uh, Costa Chimaev, Imovav, Askarov, uh, Ikrem, I should say. Um, and then let me know what you think of the matchmaking. Like I said, I don't have an issue with any one of these fights here. And again, I think with Islam, to me, it was either Volk or Oliveira. BMF title, I think, would have been too soon. Armin, I think Armin deserves it personally, but Armin's kind of young. Maybe you want to build him up a little bit more. We'll, we'll see what they decide to do there. But uh, there we go. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, at Lynch on Sports. I'm James Lynch. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.